Horace was a little light green and yellow octopus. He was a very, very friendly octopus. He liked everyone, but not everyone liked him. One day, Richard, like many other students at Brentwood Elementary School, has shown major gains in reading after studying with his computer tutor. For the past eight years, computer-assisted instruction in reading has evolved as a joint project between researchers at Stanford University and the teachers and students at Brentwood. Read Red Seahorses, Red Seahorse, do the ball. One of the new concepts of the Stanford program is the use of a computer which talks to the students. Also, the research on which the exercises are based is new, as the program has been continuously updated since its conception. It serves to bring the frontiers of research on the theory of instruction right into the classroom. Its creator, Professor Richard Atkinson, feels that computers hold the key to optimizing the student's learning time. The single most important feature of computerized instruction is that it permits us to individualize the learning process. Each student moves through the curriculum along a path that's ideally suited to his particular abilities and interests. The computer maintains a complete history on each student and uses that history on a moment-by-moment -moment basis to make decisions about what to do next. If the student's making exceptionally good progress, he jumps ahead in the curriculum. If he's having difficulties, he moves back to earlier materials or to special remedial loops. In a very real sense, the computer simulates the type of one-on-one -on -one interaction that occurs between a skilled tutor and a student. Now, a closer look at this interaction and some of the ideas behind it. Reading can be divided into two processes, decoding and communication. In the Stanford program, decoding skills are divided into the five following categories, letter identification, sight word recognition, phonics, recognition of spelling patterns, and spelling. Several types of exercises are presented to the student within each category. In each case, the computer gives a spoken cue to the student who responds by typing his answer into the machine. For example, in the word section, the student may be asked to copy the word. Later, he is asked to recognize words. Type ocean. In addition to copy and recognition exercises, the recall exercise is frequently used. Here, in the section which teaches the recognition of spelling patterns. Type your. No, your. Type your. Groovy. Type my. Thank <laughs> you. 
Audio feedback encourages the student when he responds correctly, and when the student makes a mistake, he receives immediate spoken and written feedback. For example, in this phonics recognition exercise. A final decoding exercise in the phonics section is the build a word exercise. In teaching the student the communications aspect of reading, two types of exercises are presented, word comprehension and sentence comprehension. First, the word comprehension exercise. Type the word that is something to do. Now, the sentence comprehension exercise. Type the word that completes the sentence. Type the word that completes the sentence. Fantastic. Of course, not all students make the same progress in each of the exercises. By the use of pretests and decisions based on past student performances, the authors of the program have allowed for each student to move ahead at his own rate. And most surprising, even children in kindergarten have no trouble learning to use the machines. Hello. Hello. You know, I brought you in here this morning because we're going to learn how to use the teletypes, OK? And then you'll be doing reading in here. Would you like that? Yeah. Good. Very good. Well, okay. Now, let me get around here, and I'll show you how we do it. Now, each of us got to remember one thing. And that's, if you turn around and look at your letters, now, I want you to look at your letters. Now, on each of the letters, you have an aura. See that? And that's because we'll be doing reading, okay? Say, for instance, Allison's number is what? Read it, Alice. Aura, four, five, six. And then she would write her name, and her name is what? Spell it. The equipment is first explained to the students by the proctor. Here at Brentwood, Mrs. Lily Jefferson. Mrs. Jefferson has a basic knowledge of the system and acts as a liaison between the classroom teachers and the authors of the program. All the children have to know in order to get on the machine is how to spell their first names. Once they know that, then they get on very fast. My job in the computer lab is to see that the children know how to operate the machine and how to get on. And the only problems they have is sometimes they might, the machine might stop or something like that. Then I go over and see what's wrong with it. Or if they uh, get a word or something that they can't do, well, then you tell them what to do and that's all. The reading program is the first of its kind, and much can be done to improve it. But two important facts should be noted. Students using the system have shown significant and long-term gains in reading over those without computers. And perhaps most important, the students like it. 
Professor Atkinson feels that computers are the answer to some of the problems facing education today. There's no question that we can obtain dramatic improvements in reading if we can supplement schoolwork with computerized instruction. Further, the cost of computerized instruction is not prohibitive. Most school districts can afford it if the cost can be averaged over a three or four year period. There are those who feel that computers and education pose a threat to human individuality. This could be the case if we're not careful about how we use computers. But if we show good sense and back it up with careful research, then it's my opinion that computer instruction will offer each student the greatest possible chance of maximizing his individual potentials and abilities. Thank you.